the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hey there, this is Cindy. Welcome to QuickBooks 2021. We're getting started now in module two and this module is called Getting Started because this is where we're gonna go through and set up all the information related to our company file. This is the first video and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit in this video about setting up the company file and why it's so important that you do this correctly from the very beginning. First of all, every file in QuickBooks is called a company. You can have as many company files as you like. You might wanna keep your personal information in one company file and maybe your business information in another. It could be that you have lots of clients and you want each of your clients to have a separate company file. All company files are separate. They do not share information. When you first load QuickBooks, you're going to go through a process of setting up the company file. You'll tell QuickBooks that you want to create a new company file, and it will launch you into what's called the Easy Step interview. In that interview, it's going to ask you all kinds of questions, and based on how you answer those questions, it's going to turn icons on or off on the screen for you that you can go back and change later if you want to. But the big thing about going through and setting up the company file is that it's going to create a chart of accounts for you based on how you answer all the questions in the Easy Step interview. That's why this is so important. It's much easier to get things set up correctly from the beginning, spend a little bit more time with it, and that way, once you get going, everything is there ready to go. It's not quite as easy to change things sometimes once you start going and you realize things aren't quite the way they should be. That's why it's so important to set up your company file correctly from the very beginning. Well, let's go ahead and we're going to start setting up our company file over in the second video, which is called using the easy step interview. Let's head on over there and we'll get started setting up your company file. Hey, this is Cindy. We're working in QuickBooks 2021. We're in module two now and we're on the second video. I wanna show you how to use the easy step interview to go ahead and set up your company file. This is part one, there is a part two, so make sure you watch both parts so that you know exactly how to set up everything the correct way. Let's head on over to QuickBooks and start setting up your company file. The first thing you'll wanna do is click on Create a New Company. Here, QuickBooks is asking, who are you creating the company file for? Are you creating it for myself or for someone else? And I'll just choose myself. Now there are two options. You can actually start the setup or you can come down here where it says other options and choose the advanced setup. And this is what I suggest you do. If you use this start setup over here, it'll ask you a couple of questions and then create your company file based on how you answer those questions. You're going to end up changing quite a bit of what it's set up automatically and there will be a lot left to set up. It's suggested that you take a little bit more time and go through the advanced setup and that way it's set up the way you want from the very beginning. Now that we're in the easy step interview, it's going to ask us some questions about our company. And the first thing it wants to know is what is the name of the company? I'm just gonna call it my business. And then if you hit the tab key, you'll notice that it pops down and says that my legal name is the same thing. The next thing it wants is the tax ID. Now this is optional. The only time you would actually have to have this is if you're going to do 1099s or if you're going to use the QuickBooks payroll service. If you're not gonna do either one of those, then you can leave this blank. Then it asks you for the street address, city, state, zip, phone. You can see the rest of that information. And this information is about your company itself. If you're not actually going to send out correspondence, then it's not that important that you set this up. But if you are going to, then you'll wanna have this information populated. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And the next thing it wants to know is what type of industry are you in? You can see there's a whole list of different types of industries here. There is agriculture, if you happen to be in construction, if you happen to be in insurance, you can see if you're in the hotel industry, if you're in manufacturing, there's just a ton of different options here. There is no wrong answer. And if you're not sure which one to pick, at the very bottom of the list, you will see a general product-based business and a general service-based business. I'll pick the general product-based business and then click Next. This screen asks, how is your company organized? Do not get hung up on this screen. 
The reason QuickBooks is asking you this is because sometimes people use other programs like TurboTax as an example to do their taxes. In order to pull all the information onto the correct line on the tax form, TurboTax has to know how the company is organized. Now, if you have an accountant who's doing your taxes, then you need to choose other or none. If you pick one of these choices, what will happen is you will be on different screens setting things up and it will ask you which line on the tax form would you like to pull this onto? And you're not gonna have a clue because you're not an accountant. I'm gonna go ahead and pick other or none and then click next. This screen asks me to select the first month of your fiscal year. It defaults to January, so unless yours is different, you don't need to change this. I'm gonna click next, and then it wants to set up your administrator password. Now we are gonna talk about passwords in a later module. I do suggest, however, that you set this up. And what this means is that when you open your QuickBooks company file, you will have to type in the administrator's username and the administrator password. Now, typically the user administrator name is admin, unless you've changed that. And if you haven't set up a password, then it'll let you write in. But let's go ahead and set one up now, just so that we have something in here. And later we're going to talk more about users and passwords. I'm going to click next. And now it says, create your company file. When I click next, it takes me to the save screen. You'll notice it pulled in the name of my business for my file name, and I can leave that or change it to something else if I like. And notice where it saved your file, just in case you ever have to go back and look for it. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save, and now it's creating my new company file. Now the whole thing is not set up all the way yet, but at least if we got out of this, we could come back and continue setting up those options. You can see back here that it says my business and some of my company file is being set up. Now let's go ahead and continue. We're in the customization section now. Let's click next. And now it says, what do you sell? Do you sell services, products, or both? Let's say that right now you only sell services, but maybe in the future you'd like to add products. It does not hurt to choose both products and services. It's just going to turn on icons on your home screen for those options. I'm going to click next again, and it asks, do you charge sales tax, yes or no? I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on yes, and I'll click next. This screen asks me if I want to create estimates in QuickBooks. Think of an estimate as a quote for a job. If I'd like to have my kitchen remodeled, I'm going to create an estimate for that. I'm going to leave that on yes. Then it asks me about using statements in QuickBooks. Typically statements go out to customers at the end of every month, and it's just a summary of everything that happened that month. It's a gentle reminder to your customers that they owe you money. If you don't use statements in your business, you can always say no. This screen asks about progress invoicing. Now this goes with the estimate question that it asked us. If you have an estimate, you have the ability to actually invoice the customer based on that estimate. If you have progress invoicing turned on, you can invoice your customer for a portion of that estimate or certain items that were on that estimate. I always suggest if you do estimates that you do want progress invoicing. A lot of people do not put their bills in QuickBooks. They just pile them up on their desk and when it's time to pay the bills, they'll just go through the stack and write checks. Your QuickBooks will be accurate if you do that. However, to make full use of the program, you probably want to go ahead and put all your bills in. That way you can run a report at any time to see who you owe, if it's over 30 days old, and you can get a complete picture of what your books look like. Tracking inventory in QuickBooks. True inventory means that you sell physical products and you want QuickBooks to tell you when you have, let's just say two left, so that you can order some more. That's true inventory. If you want QuickBooks to track this, you're going to say yes here and then click next. QuickBooks will also track the time that you, your employees, subcontractors spend working on different jobs. If you're doing job costing, then you do want to track the time in QuickBooks. This question asks, do you have employees? Now this can be a very misleading question because if you notice, it says we have 1099 contractors and that's under the yes option. 1099 contractors have nothing to do with payroll, absolutely nothing. They're considered vendors in QuickBooks, 
You always want your vendor or your contractor to send you a bill and then you pay that bill. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that on no for now. We can talk about payroll in a later module and then we'll click next. Now we're getting down to the end of the Easy Step interview. I wanna go ahead and stop the video right here. Let's go ahead and flip over to part two and we'll keep going with the Easy Step interview. Hey there, welcome back. This is Cindy. We are working in QuickBooks 2021 and we're going through the Easy Step interview. Now we've already gone through part one of the interview. Let's go ahead and start where we left off so that you can see how to go ahead and complete the Easy Step interview. This is the last little section of the Easy Step interview and we're going to go through and pick our start date for our company file and we're going to look at the chart of accounts that it built for us. Let's go ahead and click next at the bottom. And the first thing QuickBooks wants to know is what date would you like to start tracking your finances? Now you can start at the beginning of your fiscal year, whether that be January 1 or if yours happens to start September, whatever it is, or you can start at the beginning of the current month or if you wanna pick a particular date, you can do that as well. I want you to think about if you're starting this in November, do you wanna go all the way back to January and put everything in that happened? Keep in mind that your reports are only as accurate as the data you have in here. If you decide that it's so late in the year, you just like to start going and get familiar with QuickBooks first and then have a good start date of January of next year, that's okay too, but you have to decide. QuickBooks will still let you put in something prior to whatever date you choose. It just has to have a start date. I'm gonna leave mine on the beginning of the fiscal year and click next. Now here are the income and expense accounts that QuickBooks set up for you based on how you answered all the questions in the Easy Step interview. When you look down the list, the ones that have a check mark over here, those are the ones that it thinks you'll want to use. If you happen to be here and you're looking at one of these and you say to yourself, you know, I need charitable expenses, notice you can go ahead and check these off here. But we're gonna go ahead and leave what we've got and we will spend time talking about the chart of accounts over in module three. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And now it says congratulations, and I'm going to click go to setup. Now we're not totally set up yet, but we've got 80% of our company files set up. There are some things we're gonna to have to do, like change some preferences and things like that. But for the most part, we've got our company file back here and we could start working if we wanted to. If you get this screen here, it does ask you if you want to add people, which would be customers. It asks you if you wanna add your products and services in your bank accounts. You will want to add all that, but we'll go ahead and do that a little bit later. I'm gonna go ahead and just close that window there. And it may ask you to go ahead and sign into your company file. If that's the case, go ahead and do that. And I'll just go ahead and put mine in here and go ahead and hit continue at the bottom. I'll go ahead and put in my password and then go ahead and sign in and then it's going to actually put us back on our home screen. If you get the new feature tour that you see right here, you're welcome to go through it and see the new features of QuickBooks, but I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. And now you'll see that we're actually back on our home screen. Now, a couple of things you're gonna notice, if you get these helpful hints like this, you can just click anywhere on your screen and they'll go away. And that's how you set up your company file using the Easy Step interview. Why don't we go ahead now and head over to the fourth video in this module and we will talk a little bit about looking at some of the options for setting up the name of your company file and the address and things like that. We're gonna go into a feature that's actually called My Company. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2021 course. Take a look at the course by clicking right over there. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks Pro 2020 videos, go ahead and click over there.